We are constantly reading old code as part of the effort to write new code. Making it easy to read actually makes it easier to write. Seven years ago I started reading this book, Clean Code by Robert C. Martin, and it has completely changed how I approach programming. It is considered as one of the bibles in programming, and it helped me think before writing code. It got me over fear of, of refactoring, and even others got interested in my code at various conferences. I've also attended several funerals of applications that this book mentions, I will come back to that. This book, surprise surprise, talks about the importance of clean code. It provides both theoretical and also practical insights and tips. So whom is this book for? The very first sentence here says, you are reading this book for two reasons. First, you are a programmer. Second, you want to be a better programmer. Good, we need better programmers. Every programmer? <sighs> here are my three takeaways, three disagreements and three action points from this book. When I started programming, we got one project every week for our Los Angeles partner for five years, which means I worked on 150 projects and it was a blast, man. It was an awesome experience. But we struggled when our projects would grow over a certain point. Project managers and clients just could not understand how difficult it is to change functionality once the project has started. And I often wish we could just delete everything and start from scratch. We just had no other options. Changes were way too big. We even lost some huge projects like Yukin Media when we were just starting out. And when I moved to the Kingdom of Norway, I got to be an architect and a tech lead in a brand new project with the power to do things differently now. My company was the client, so no more external clients, no more project managers, changing everything. Hey, it was a dream. It didn't take long before I got slapped in the face with reality and got that familiar feeling again, desire to start from scratch. Which confused the hell out of me as I had no one to blame this time. And after talking to my imaginary friends, I figured the one and only constant in the entire equation. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, it was me. If I would continue like this, I could not only destroy more projects, but total also my career at one point. So I got sick or tired of being sick and tired, and I decided to do something about it. With 10 years of experience and 151 projects on my belt, I started to learn programming. I guess it was about time, had to happen eventually. I bought this book, and guess what the very first chapter talks about? And exactly this problem, so I started taking notes. I also signed up for a confidence boost program because I needed one. The ratio of time spent reading versus writing is well over 10 to 1. We are constantly reading old code as part of the effort to write new code. So many times I've read 100 lines of code only to change a single line and actually fix something. So making it easy to read actually makes it easier to write. So first takeaway here is that understanding that code quality is important, right? So the cleaner code is to read, the cleaner it is to write, and then read again. And the cleaner we write it, the cleaner we read it, etc, etc. Which according to this book and my naive logic should make our job 10 times easier if it's 10 to 1 ratio, right? And if you think about it, how else can a programmer make a better application? Sure, good architecture, good documentation, project managers, everything that helps, but uh, like in my example from before, nothing matters if your code is not clean enough so that you can control it. If everything is connected, uh, any change here makes a bug there. And <laughs> I used to write spaghetti code like this. It is much better now. Who's the tech lead? The code got worse and worse until they simply could not manage it any longer. It was the bad code that brought the company down. I was on several funerals of projects that were not given a second chance. They all started with newest technologies and best practice and best intentions, but quick fixes and temporal functionality would make it impossible to maintain it any longer. It was a sad moment being on the losing side. Ever seen a big, slow and clunky banking system? They all started small and grew just fine, but the bad code would just sneak on it and stay there until the very end. And then competitors would come and eat you alive because you cannot adapt and evolve. Leave the campground cleaner than you found it. Obviously, I'm not a rocket surgeon, so this was a kinda big new thing for me. I was afraid to refactor my code all the time. 
I knew about it before, but reading this book made it very obviously for me why, but also when to refactor. If you are ever afraid of changing some code because you think something else will break, and that is exactly the moment you should refactor your code. You do not have control over it and you are afraid of it, which is a bigger problem. Imagine changing a flat tire on a car and then worrying if the brakes would still work. And easiest is to start small by small, little by little, right? Fix small changes all the time, just 10 minutes before each commit and eventually there will be nothing more major to refactor. So refactoring is a continuous process, it's part of the process, it's not separate or optional activity reserved for one day a week. So always be cleaning. And this point got me into researching a bit deeper topics like refactoring, clean code, technical debt, solid, dry, and I guess it is the price that we self-taught developers had to pay back in the days when there were no good examples and tutorials online. And I didn't even notice when I started participating in complex problems or explaining some obvious patterns to a confused senior developer. And then it hit me. Others struggle with this, not just me. I said I've read this book seven years ago. Not quite. I read half of it then, but I had to read it again for this review. It's a bit hard to read, for me at least. Somehow I struggled to get back to it, which is not always the case with good books. I definitely relate, but I just found it hard to read. Maybe it's because the story stops a bit early and the rest of the book is actually related to my point too. If you are a web or front-end developer, not all is that relatable. JUnit, concurrency and some other examples are quite Java-oriented. Granted, the book was written before Frontend Developer was even a word, but I still think you should read it as code is code, right? Examples in the book illustrate how to think when improving the code. Just don't get discouraged if you find it a bit difficult. And finally, uh, just my personal opinion, there is a lot of heavy separation of processes with a lot of interfaces from the actual running code, and that is one of the big points of this book actually. And I for sure do not have nearly enough experience to argue against this, so I'm just stating my personal thoughts, again as a front-end developer. If I was to build the next bank processing application, uh, then it would all make sense for sure. For a web app, eh. But again, reading those princ these principles, even if they are not applying directly to, do to you, is very helpful. Same as test-driven development, for example. I don't remember last time somebody approved that in a project, but knowing how to do it and uh, organizing my code accordingly helped me tremendously. First half of the book is interesting and very useful regardless what are you programming with, so uh, maybe skip some of the chapters that are not relatable to you. Also do not trust the entire book if you do not agree with it, but trust some parts of it. There are very few books that you will 100% agree with. However, if our behavior did not change after reading any book, we have wasted the time reading it. Here are three tasks, but I have five more tasks, takeaways and critics for you in the PDF book companion, link in the description. Shorten function arguments. And I used to this app relatively well, but recently my argument list would <laughs> just start to grow. This usually means that a function is doing a bit more than it should. Something is not quite right with the single responsibility principle. No side effects. No hidden side effects except the input and output. And it has always been difficult for me. My classes and my components and functions would always somehow change the global application state. Working with pure web components, commonly called as dumb components, has helped me quite a lot here. Especially with a React and the way it's accessing the global stop in every component very easily. On one project we were combining Stencil, Ionic and Angular components in the same application. And it is here where my eyes were opened wide. It was very crucial that components are self-contained, so Storybook helped a lot here as it forced us to separate components completely, to have them isolated. Removing dead code. And this is tough for me. I hang on to old hobby projects thinking that I might need them one day, but I actually never do. And it's the same with code. By the time I actually try to reuse some commented out code, the rest of the application has changed so much that I have to rewrite it anyway. Sonar Cube helps me with this one tremendously. On each commit it will remind me about uh, different code smells, but also the commented code that it is still in the git history if I needed it. 
I just need to uh, learn how to use Git. But there is another book. These tasks might seem obvious, but so is the other one, and people who need it most rarely actually use it. Now trust me, I know what you are thinking, my friend. I thought the same once. I do not have the time to clean. My project is different, special. It has deadlines. I was there, my friend. But then I found this book. The only way to make deadline, the only way to go fast, is to keep the code as clean as possible at all times. I've watched my projects die because of bad code, and I promise it will not happen again. Not on my watch. 